So this is the 12 megapixel, the 8 megapixel, and the 5 megapixel, Reolinx AI, POE, IP, and VR cameras. Which one is better? And I know one is better in night vision. So let's find out. Hello guys, Lifehackster here. Today is the day we are going to test out Reolink's newest PoE, IP, and VR cameras. Reolink recently released their newest versions of their PoE cameras, and now they have AI capability and can detect people in cars. I know, Reolink has been late in this game. Some Wi-Fi cameras have this feature years back, and they now even have facial recognition. I do have this one 4K NVR system, and it also has person and vehicle detection, and even facial recognition, but it is not really reliable. You either get no notification or a lot of them. It also has a PIR sensor, but it is still pretty sensitive even in the lowest setting. At CES 2020 last January, Reolink showed their AI on these cameras, which I was pretty stoked because depending on its implementation and reliability, it can be a game changer with PoE and VR cameras. Because up until now, there is no reliable NVR cameras that can detect people. And most of the time, you will just be getting a lot of false motion alerts and you end up just turning off push notifications and just use the cameras as a backup to Wi-Fi cameras, like in my setup. I use Ring cameras for my notifications because they are decently reliable in motion detection and has pretty fast notifications and usually within 3-5 to five seconds when motion is detected. Aside from person and vehicle detection, Reolink also released a 12 megapixel version of their turret cameras. This camera is capable of recording in 40, 96 by 30, 72 pixels. Today, we'll be comparing these AI cameras and I have the 5 megapixel, 8 megapixel, which is the 4K version, and the new 12 megapixel. I want to thank Reolink for sending me these cameras plus the NVR for testing and review. I'm going to do a two-part video series in this review. First part is the comparison video between these three cameras and I'll be setting up the cameras side by side in my backyard. And we will compare the video quality day and night and see which camera type will be a good option for your home. The part two video is going to be when I swap my current Swan 4K NVR camera system and also be testing out the vehicle detection part of the AI on this Reolink cameras. And my overall thoughts and see if my decision to swap my NVR system to Reolink is a good choice. We will see. Let's check out and compare the camera features first. So the 5 megapixel version has a bullet type camera, the RLC 510A which I have here, but it also has a third type, the RLC 520A. The 8 megapixel 4K version also has the bullet type and also a third type. At this time, the 12 megapixel version only comes in a third type design. All these cameras share these features. They are PoE or power over Ethernet cameras, which you can connect it directly to your PoE switch or adapter just using the Ethernet port. Or you can connect it directly to your router and plug in a separate 12 volt for power. With this setup, the camera becomes an IP camera and you can control it using the Reolink app on your phone, the client software in your computer, or through a web browser. In my setup though, I'm going to use Reolink's NVR, which I will connect the cameras through the NVR and the NVR will be connected to the router so that I can access the cameras online and through my app. All the cameras has the AI person and vehicle detection, has audio recording, and subscription free. All of them can also record to a micro SD card inserted to the camera itself and is compatible up to 256 gigabyte card. Now time to compare the video quality. We have the 5 megapixel version which has the 2560 by 1920 pixel resolution and records up to 30 frames per second. It has an 80 degree horizontal and 42 degree vertical field of view. This has a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. The 8 megapixel has a 3840 by 2160 resolution 4K quality and records up to 25 frames per second. It has an 87 degree horizontal and 44 degree vertical field of view. This has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Then we have the 12 megapixel which has a 4096 by 3072 pixel resolution still considered 4K Ultra HD and can record up to 20 frames per second. 
it only has a 67 degree horizontal and 41 degree vertical field of view. And this one is also a 4x3 aspect ratio. Let's check out the video and audio quality. So uh, this is the video and audio quality of uh, Reolink's AI, POE, IP, and NVR cameras. So we have the 12 megapixel, the 8 megapixel, and also the 5 megapixel. And I have the person uh, detection notification turned on on all cameras. So this is the video quality at 10 feet, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 35, So as you can see, as long as there is motion, you will still get the notification. So it just barely have no pull off. So uh, this is the video and audio quality of uh, Reolink's AI, POE, IP, and NVR cameras. So we have the 12 megapixel, the 8 megapixel, and also the 5 megapixel. And I have the person uh, detection notification turned on on all cameras. So this is the video quality at 10 feet, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, So uh, this is the video and audio quality of uh, Reolink's AI, POE, IP, and NVR cameras. So we have the 12 megapixel, the 8 megapixel, and also the 5 megapixel. And I have the person uh, detection notification turned on on all cameras. So this is the video quality at 10 feet, 15. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, So uh, this is the video and audio quality of uh, Reolink's AI, POE, IP, and NVR cameras. So we have the 12 megapixel, the 8 megapixel, and also the 5 megapixel. And I have the person uh, detection notification turned on on all cameras. So this is the video quality at 10 feet, 15 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, So this is the video quality of the 5 megapixel Reolink AI POE IP camera at night. 
night vision turned on and no lights and this is what it looked like at 10 feet 15 20 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So this is the video quality of the 8 megapixel uh, real link AI uh, POE IP camera and I turned off the notifications now so this is what it looks like same thing infrared LEDs turned on and no light uh, this is what it looks like at 10 feet 15 20 25 30 35, 40, 45, 50. So this is the video quality of the 12 megapixel uh, real link AI uh, POE IP camera at night lights off and this is what it looks like or night vision uh, on and infrared LEDs on and this is what it looks like at 10 feet 15 20 25 30 35 40, 45, 50. So this is the video quality quality of the real links AI IP POE NVR cameras at night and this with all my lights are on and the 12 megapixel has uh, its uh, infrared LEDs still turned on but all of them have uh, I set to automatic which will turn on the night vision when it's dark but I guess the light uh, triggered it to, uh, to full color on both the 8 megapixel and 5 megapixel so this is what it looks like at 10 feet 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, So as you can see, the notification keeps on notifying me as long as there's a person. All has person detection turned on. So this is the video quality, quality of the real links, AI, IP, POE, and VR cameras at night. And this with all my lights are on. And the 12 megapixel has uh, its uh, infrared LEDs still turned on. But all of them have uh, I set to automatic, which will turn on the night vision when it's dark. But I guess the light uh, triggered it to, uh, to full color on both the 8 megapixel and 5 megapixel. So this is what it looks like at 10 feet. 15. 20. 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50.
Okay, as to color recording, all the camera's night vision were set to auto. But my backyard lights are enough to trigger the 5 and 8 megapixel camera's light sensor and change it to color mode to record in color. But the 12 megapixel didn't. And it still has its infrared lights turned on. Turning off the infrared lights is not even enough to change it to color recording. And I have to change the day and night setting to color mode for the camera to record in color. But before my lights got triggered, you see the camera's view is pretty dark. So there's no low light capability on this camera. And you don't want to set this camera up like this because it will not be able to detect any motion if it cannot see anything. And will be dependent on your motion activated lights. But I just have to test how it looks like in color mode at night. For motion alert notification speed test, I set all the cameras to person detection only. And you already have noticed how fast and frequent it is when I did my video quality testing. But let's check it out again. So we are going to test the motion alert notification speed of these uh, AI cameras. So I have set the 12 megapixel, uh, the 8 megapixel, and the 5 megapixel Reolink's uh, IP cameras uh, to have person and vehicle detection. So I'm on my LTE connection. And let's check it out and see how quick it is. There you go. So three notifications. All right. See, all of them got a, a notification and it says person detected. All right. So and when I click on it, it goes to live view, which loads up pretty quick. Okay, so I'm here at 50 foot range and that's the, my max distance that I can test this. So we are going to test. I'm hiding behind the tree right here because it, it will detect me. Anyway, so we are going to see if it will be accurate in detecting me as a person at 50 feet on both the 5, 8, and 12 megapixel Reolink AI, IP, POE, and VR cameras. So let's test this out. Okay, I got a notification. Let me see here. There you go. See, I got, I got detected from three of them at 50 feet. Now, I can tell you that person detection is pretty spot on on these AI cameras. I do need to lower down the sensitivity of the 5 megapixel though from 41, which was the default out of the box because I did get some false notifications. You can also adjust the sensitivity based on the scheduled time frame if you want, but it is not really needed if you just opt for person and or vehicle detection. I can't really test vehicle detection in my backyard, but I'll be testing it in my second video. So aside from motion sensitivity, all the cameras also has motion zoning, which you can customize the areas you want to monitor. I'll test this more when I install these cameras around the house in my second video. Now, there's some confusing settings in the app. The first one is where Reolink plays the push notification setting. And it is under the camera selection. And you would think it will only affect the highlighted camera. Just like the other settings above and below it. But if you read the fine print, it will say that it will affect all the cameras that are connected in the NVR. This needs to be placed in the main NVR setting and have a separate switch for each camera. Anyways, you can get around this issue by scheduling the notification for each camera and you can then select if you only want or combination of all motion, person, and vehicle detection. And if you want to turn off notifications on a specific camera, you just need to gray it out in the schedule. Another confusing setting is on the motion zones. You are marking the areas you don't want to monitor. Unlike normally, we make a zone for areas we want to monitor. Overall though, compared to Swan's app interface, real links are a lot better. Lastly, just a heads up with the NVR if this is the setup you want to do. Real Link has a specific version of the NVR that will work with the AI on the cameras. Your RLN8 410 NVR should have the following hardware versions. N2MBO2 or H3MB18. And even if you have these hardware versions, you still need to update the firmware to the latest, which has the new Reolink user interface. Overall, these are very promising cameras, especially the 12 megapixel one. 
I do like its night vision, which is kind of weird because its specs are the same like the number of infrared LEDs as to the 8 or the 5 megapixel one. But its night vision is definitely better and more spread out and the sensor can compensate really well when the subject is around 10 feet from the camera. So my next project will be replacing my current NVR system with this one. And I'll be adding non-AI Reolink PoE cameras to complete my 8-channel system. And that will be on another video. I'll answer more questions you have about these cameras on that video as well. Like how well the AI holds up in real-life setup with motion zones and sensitivity dialed in. I'm also interested to see if the 12 megapixel camera with a punched in field of view will be good in reading license plates from the street, especially at night. We will see. Thanks for watching and I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And click the bell notification so as to get notified when I upload product reviews like this video, product updates, comparison videos, and long term reviews. Thank you.